Welcome back to the Malted Man Cave. Tonight we are going to be reviewing Ben Romack 10 Imperial Proof. Comes in at a whopping 57% ABV, which you guys know I'm all about. It is not colored, and unfortunately I could not find out either way whether it was non-chill filtered or not, or whether it was chill filtered or not. Uh, I found a couple opinions online, but I couldn't find anything definitive or enough that I'd be comfortable to say whether it was or was not. It doesn't taste like it's chill filtered, um, so if you guys know, leave it in the comments just for the benefit of the rest of us. That would be appreciated. So, Benro Mac is a space side, and it's a little unusual that it's actually a slightly peated space side whiskey. It's one of the, I don't, well, actually, Ben Reek does it as well. I apologize about said something in, inaccurate. There's a couple that are kind of starting to do some peated space side expressions. However, um, it's kind of unusual, um, which back in the day, it wouldn't have been. I think in the 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, most space siders would have been um, peated. They mostly used coal or peat back then before some of the newer technology that slowly became kind of incorporated into modern day whiskey as we know it now. So it's, it's pretty interesting um, to have a space cider with peat to it. Uh, this is a very, very good whiskey. This is very similar to Springbank 12 cast strength. It's almost as good. Um, it's just kind of an almost as good version, just not quite. But if you guys know, Springbank 12 cast strength is pretty much my favorite whiskey right now. So that this is even close means that this is going to get a very high score. And it's something you guys should definitely look, um, look out for. So a little bit about Ben Romack. It was purchased in 1993 by Gordon McPhail, the independent bottling company. Uh, I believe in 1998 is when they actually started producing the whiskey. Uh, and they're kind of known, at least they say, they're one of the few, if not the only distillery that actually use both brewer's yeast and distiller's yeast. Um, and a little side note, that is actually something I think that has way more to do with the actual flavor than where the water is sourced from, where, um, you know, some of the other factors that they like to tell you on the, on the tins and the bottles. The yeast has a huge part to play in the flavor. Um, and they state that they believe that Ben Roma kind of gets its unique character and that really kind of rich, robust flavor from having both distiller's yeast and the brewer's yeast. So I don't know enough about yeast, but it sounds, sounds legit. Uh, they also are known for having a very long fermentation process. I think most is kind of two to three days, and they actually can go up to five days. So I don't know, again, I don't know if that plays into part of their unique taste. Um, anything else I want to say about Ben Romack? Uh, another amazing thing, and another reason that I really wanted to do this review and that I want to continue to support Ben Romack is that they actually have an amazing wood policy that they only use first fill cask. For those of you who do not know, that is a huge financial investment. And that means that they take they take their whiskey very seriously and they truly value what is actually in here. Not just what they say about their whiskey, not the bottlings, not the tins, not the marketing, that they actually care about the innate, inherent quality of the whiskey. And that is something that I applaud. And they also are very serious about dunnage warehouses. They actually are actually building new dunnage warehouses, which is fairly rare. Um, a lot of newer, bigger companies run by Diageo or other big multinational corporations that own whiskey companies, they kind of, oh, just throw them in an industrial warehouse. And they're really missing out on integral parts of flavor and how you build up the whiskey's flavor. So again, touche, bravo to Ben Romack. So a little bit about what's the deal with the Imperial Proof? There is another uh, Ben Romack 10 that is 43% ABV and it is not Imperial Proof, which is a very good whiskey. I believe Ralphie in 2014 or somewhere around that time made it his whiskey of the year. I've had it and it's good. It wasn't anywhere near as good as this. I don't know if I had a bad batch. I just had a little sampler. Um, maybe I didn't spend enough time with it, but I preferred this like five times more than, than that. But it's possible that I just had a bad batch. So, but this is 57% ABV and it's Imperial Proof. For those of you who don't know, it kind of dates back to old nautical terms, to the old days in the, the Royal British Navy. They were, each sailor was allotted a certain amount, like a little tote of rum per day. Uh, being in the Coast Guard, that was the good days, man. 
Wish we would have got a little, little ration of rum or whiskey. That would have been amazing. But so they each had their own little, you know, portion a day. And I think sometimes the captains or the lieutenants would get cheap and actually try to add water into the different rations to save money. So one of the things that the sailors would do is that they would actually take a little gunpowder, throw it in, and actually take a flint and light it. And if it quickly caught on fire a little bit or had a little spark, that was proof that it hadn't been tampered with and it was the proper, you know, 57% ABV. So that's how it kind of, it's different from the American system of proof that's... Oh my gosh. Lens, there's the whiskey wife who is messing with my reviews. You want to come down and introduce yourself, babe? You don't? You ready for bed? All right, we'll have you some other night when you're all done up and dolled up. Love you, babe. Uh, I knew she was going to do that tonight. I heard her stirring up. I'm very normally very, very paranoid about only doing it when my wife and my kids are in bed. I knew she was going to do it. So I apologize, guys. Anyways, back to the review. I completely lost my thread. <laughs> what was it then? Anyways, I want to read to you guys a little bit about what goes into the, the, the cast types. And I'm not going to go on memory. I'm just going to go ahead and read it to you. So, Ben Romac 10 Imperial Proof is actually a combination of 80% ex bourbon, first fill bourbon, and 20% ex sherry cast. Again, all first fill. Um, those sherry casts are probably actually American oak, because it goes on to distinguish later that after a nine year period with the 80% and the 20%, they all are then married for an additional year into first fill European Oloroso oak sherry casks. Um, so whatever they did, it's beautiful because this is a good whiskey. And a little bit more interesting information about this, they get their bourbon barrels from Heaven Hill and Jim Beam. Heaven Hill is an amazing company that I fully support. Elijah Craig is one of the best bang for your buck whiskeys that I actually did a review on recently. So go ahead and go and check that out. And they get their sherry cast from the Bodegas Williams and Humphrey in Jerez, Spain. So, enough blabbering, and without further ado, let's get into the whiskey. Might as well polish it off, I guess. You only live once, right? I'm gonna be having a conversation with my wife after this. Ah, cool. All right, so. On the nose. Oh, guys, this is amazing stuff. You get this, it's like you're in a barbecued smokehouse. Just this amazing, it's not super like crazy overpowering, just this just delicious barbecue smokehouse nose. That kind of goes into a little bit of dried chocolate cocoa. Again, I say this a lot with Glendronic. It's like putting your nose into a tin can of chocolate Nesquicks. Then that goes into a little bit of marzipan and slight sherry raisins. Slight menthol and cola. A little bit of vegetal soil that I attribute to the Dunge warehouses. Kind of get that amazing earthy note um, that's kind of in the background holding everything together the barbecue the marzipan the marzipan the sherry you get a little bit of just barley sugar and last but not least you get this really good um, burnt biscuity note I know it sounds unpleasant it's just good not like hardcore burnt biscuits just slightly overcooked over like burnt biscuits for the palate You get a sweet maltiness that kind of goes into marzipan and candied almonds. Man, that's good stuff. For whatever reason, that tastes even better tonight than usual. Biscuits and honey. Doesn't 
taste as burnt biscuits like it did kind of on the nose. I think that kind of was the smoke that was kind of making the biscuity notes smell burnt. Sweet barbecue ribs, like that delicious kind of sweet baby rays, sweet barbecue ribs, like where it's like kind of caramelized on the grill. That's that taste of just sweet barbecue ribs. Chocolate, toffee, saltwater taffy. A little bit of that saltiness that you get because it is actually a coastal space side distillery. So you get a little bit of that maritime salty quality that I really like. Obviously that makes Isla and Campbelltown and Spring Springbank um, whiskeys amazing. Again, you get that menthol and cola notes again. And last but not least, you get from that sherry, you get again, just a little bit of like orange marmalade. Just amazing stuff. Last but not least on the finish. Again, you get that delicious burnt biscuit smokehouse sweet barbecue ribs like you just got done licking your fingers after eating the delicious you know rack of sweet barbecue ribs that trails into this chocolatey sherried deliciousness it's it's i wouldn't say it's long it's it's medium to long finish that just just kind of hangs in there it's just like you just had a delicious snack of sweet barbecue ribs and then this delicious chocolate chocolate covered fruits you know, chocolate covered plums. Um, amazing stuff, guys. And even if it wasn't good, I would still preach Ben Romack just because they're doing things the right way. Um, just the wood policy in and of itself that they are doing all first fill, like, I completely tip my hat to them. That is a huge financial investment, and I believe it, it's going to make their whiskey a lot better in the long run. So, um, my hat's off to you, Ben Romack. Malted Man Cave Mark is a 92 out of 100. Delicious stuff. Go pick you guys up some. Um, malted Man Cave approved. And I hope to see you guys soon. Sláinte.